What's going on guys? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another transfer video for you guys today. I haven't done a video. I don't think I've done it all weekend. I had to take a little bit of a break. I saw a couple uni mates. Just had to relax. Had to just take a couple days off for myself. Also, there was no real big news that came out. The most big news that came out was the friendly that we had against Brighton on Saturday. We all thought Kai Havertz was going to be announced this morning. As usual, it hasn't been announced. We're still waiting. It's still nearly there. We just need the final piece of paperwork to be sorted. Hopefully, we get a later announcement today. I know Kai Havertz has gone off for international duty, which means that if something hasn't been completed, it might take another 10 days to complete, which is just jarring as hell, and it is also making me feel a little bit paranoid. But the deal still looks like it's coming, so we don't have to worry too much. Literally, the scenes when this deal actually gets put across the line and we can finally breathe where we can be like, yes, Kai Havertz is a Chelsea player now. That is going to be a great day. Hopefully it's soon. Hopefully it is today. Hopefully all the media stuff, the photos and everything has been done. And we're just waiting on that announcement. And hopefully I can do a second video today where I can say Kai Havertz is a Chelsea player. But before then, let's just do a weekend roundup. We'll talk about some of the news that's happened. There's a couple bits of news that are coming over the last two days. There was never really anything enough to make a significant video about it. So I'm just going to round it all up in this video. But before I start this video, if you haven't done so already, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button and press that bell notification button as well to be the first guy to know whenever I release any content on this channel. That's don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification button as well. Now let's go straight into the first bit of news from the weekend. We'll start off with the game. Brighton versus Chelsea, the first game of the season, but not the first game of the season, a friendly match, which nearly got cancelled because we'd be facing Brighton in two weeks. For the most part, it was a bit of a drag. I'll be real, if you lot saw me on the watch along half the way through the second half, I was just sitting there like, oh, this one's a bit long, but there's still a couple talking points to have. Um, the big two talking points that people were thinking about going into this match were Hakim Ziyech and Timo Werner, who were going to be making their debuts for Chelsea in this match. Werner opened the scoring in four minutes, an amazing ball from Hakim Ziyech found Hudson-Odoi. I don't know if he tried to make the shot with that header or if he tried to lay it off to Werner. Regardless, it got laid off to Timo Werner and in that position, one-on-one -on -one the goalkeeper. The ball's going one way and it's going into the back of the net. Bar that, not really much talking points for the first half, I thought. Um, Timo Werner was heavily involved in the link-up play. Didn't really see him making those runs in behind that everyone thought he was going to be doing, but Brighton had a very compact defensive shape. They didn't offer him a lot of that space in behind. So to counteract that, he just started dropping deep a lot more and linking up with the play. And that's another great aspect of his game. His passing was excellent. They weren't... I don't want to say they weren't not progressive passes because they were good passes, but they were more sideways, get the ball out of pressure, find a, find a winger on the far side who could deliver a ball in. But it was still good, as in he wasn't losing the ball. He was still heavily involved in the play. He was still having an impact on the team. So it was a promising first performance from him. Ziyech, I do want to say, kind of overshadowed him a little bit. Some of the passing on Hakim Ziyech, oh my gosh. The upgrade that we've had. The curls on this free kick curls were ridiculous and we only saw him on the pitch for about an hour before he had that injury which i don't think it's too deep before anyone gets worried about it i think it was just a little knock and he got taken off as a precaution which is better in the long sense of things but he had a very promising performance more like he didn't again have anything sh that shone or st or struck out right in front of your eyes. But I thought he had a good performance. I thought his passing was very good. Set pieces were strong. And yeah, very promising performances from Hakim Ziyech and Timo Werner in their first performance in a Chelsea shirt. Clark Salter, another person I want to give credit to. It was a very poor defensive performance. Again, I will, I'll just throw that straight out there. But Clark Salter looked very composed on the ball. Never really made the wrong decisions. Always found it out with the ball. Defensively, I don't think Brighton came into our area enough time to see his tackling ability or anything like that. But he was composed and he had a good performance, so I'm going to give him credit for that. Um, Ruben Loftus-Cheek also still looked like he was getting back to his best. I, that friendly before the Europa League final was going to piss me off for so many years to come. I've got nothing wrong against the purpose of that friendly. Anti, anti, um, raising awareness for anti-Semitism, nothing wrong with that. The timing was wrong. I don't know how no one thought we wouldn't be favourites for the Europa League final and have to play that game in a week. 
and then we also had one of the worst pitches we played on this decade. It w someone was going to get hurt, and it had to be injury prone Loftus Cheek, and it's such a shame. I really hope it's not the end for him, and I really, really hope he can get past his mental block because an Achilles injury is always going to be a mental block to you guys. So I, I hope he comes. I hope he comes back better. This is going to be a very big season for Loftus Cheek. Um, defensively, like I said, still poor. We conceded two penalties in the second half. First one, Rudiger conceded, saved by Willy Caballero. The second one uh, was Ampadu with the tackle, I think. It was a bit rash. Gross scored that time. They weren't going to miss two in a row. Uh, Conor Gallagher looked very promising. I will say that very promising. His work rate was immense. And yeah, just ended 1-1 Brighton, Chelsea in what was not really the most entertaining of games, but... It's the first game of pre-season. Fitness levels were going to be all over the place. It was going to look slow and lethargic at times. And that's exactly how it looked like. Second piece of news. Inter Milan's interest in Emerson looks to have cooled off. I don't. I think Inter Milan have been thrown off by Chelsea's 25 million valuation of Emerson. Which is a bit annoying because we know they had agreed terms between the player and the club. And honestly, Emerson's now our third choice left back. I don't think 25 million is something that it needs to be a deal breaker or anything like that. I think we could sell him for cheaper. I think we should sell him for cheaper. I think it would be better in the long term to just get him off the payroll. We don't need three left backs. I think... Marcus Alonso would be a better option for us. But Inter Milan are now looking at Rome as Alexander Kolarov. I think terms have now been agreeing between the player and the club there. And it's just a case of Inter and Roma agreeing a fee as well. Which means we're going to lose a player, which means we're going to lose a club that was interested in taking one of our Deadwood players. Bit jarring. Straight up is hella jarring. I hope we can find a player, that, a club that will take him. Emerson's agent said, it's possible. is it possible they will leave Chelsea? Yes, this possibility exists. I have not yet spoken to the club. I can only say that Inter are interested in player. We will see. Now, really, I really wish we could push this deal through. I'm not sure what other clubs are, other clubs are going to be interested in Emerson as well. The good thing is, this transfer window lasts till October. So it's not going to be anything too deep. But... We need to clear the rest of our Deadwood out. I think it's been a while since we sold a player. We've been bringing in so many players in recently. We haven't sold anyone either. And I know Inter Milan are also interested in Golo Kante. I've heard rumours of a potential loan with an option to buy. That one though, no. I don't want to see that deal happen. I People have been saying they want, they think now's the right time to cash on N'Golo Kante. I personally think he's had one injury prone season and dropped below his high standards. And everyone's just giving him unnecessary shit for him. I, I don't think it's fair. So hopefully N'Golo Kante stays. I hope Chelsea just ignore this bid that Inter Milan have made. And I hope same way we just get rid of Emerson because we really need to. Final bit of news for today. Conor Gallagher and... Several English clubs have been interested in signing Conor Gallagher on loan. He's had a couple successful loans at Charlton and at Swansea. I remember to the point where we took them, when we took Gallagher from Charlton to Swansea. I think Charlton ended up going down that season as well because he was their best player by a mile. And Crystal Palace looked to have won the race for Conor Gallagher's signature. I think he's um, completed a medical at Selhurst Park. And it's all about green terms and everything else like that. But that should be done in the rest in the next couple days. And after a couple successful loan spells in the championship, I think it's good for him to go to a Premier League side. Show that he has the same level of performance in the Premier League as opposed to the championship as well. It was also smart to get him at an attacking-minded club. Which I think Crystal Palace really look like becoming this season. Wilfred Zaha, Jordan Ayew. They've also signed the break Chi Eze from QPR as well. They've got a very strong attacking setup. And hopefully if the philosophy becomes more attacking based as well. It's something that Conor Gallagher can thrive on. We know that's the reason why we took him out of Charlton in initially as well. Because they weren't playing a progressive style of play that he could fit into. And then um, assimilate into more into the Chelsea squad when he came back from his loan. So we're hoping for more of the same from him at Crystal Palace. If he can have the same sort of form that he had at Swansea and at Charlton it could be him in the first team next season and there's players already in the fringes Ross Barkley's on the fringes Jorginho's on the fringes hate to say it so's Ruben Loftus-Cheek so opportunities there for Conor Gallagher it's going to be really interesting to see how he develops at Crystal Palace uh, there was a second bid for Edouard Mendy placed in as well, but I don't know the legitimacy of that or whether it's been accepted or rejected or not. All I know is we are still pushing on Edouard Mendy. 
and hopefully Kai Havertz is announced today so I can throw a second video in a much happier mood. But guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the points I've made. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care. Up the trails.